Ever wonder where the safest place in the universe might be? Let's take a moment to explore Psalm 91 from the King James Version of the Bible. This psalm opens with, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwelleth here implies a lasting presence, not a fleeting visit or a brief stay. The psalmist is describing a deep, enduring relationship with God, a relationship not limited to times of distress or need, but one that persists unbroken in the divine presence. This enduring presence is in a secret place, a sanctuary removed from the world's turmoil. The psalmist boldly states, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Can you sense the steadfast belief in these words? The psalmist isn't merely hoping or wishing, he's asserting that the Lord is his refuge and fortress. Such trust is not born of naivety or blind faith. It's born of an intimate understanding of God's character and his promises. But what does it mean that God is our refuge and fortress? A refuge is a sanctuary, a place of safety from life's tempests. A fortress, however, is a stronghold, a fortified place designed to repel enemy attacks. We find both in God. He is our safe harbor from trouble, our bulwark against adversities we face. The psalmist's conviction is apparent in his assurance. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. There's a promise of protection here. The psalmist is confident that God will deliver those trusting in him. Not maybe, not might, but surely. Imagine, a fortress not built by human hands, but by the creator of the universe. How safe must that be? What if you had a shield that could protect you from anything? Ponder this question as we delve into the depths of Psalm 91, a biblical passage rich with powerful metaphors of divine protection. In this psalm, God's protection is painted in the comforting imagery of a mother bird safeguarding her chicks under her wings. The psalmist pens, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. In this elegant depiction, our relationship with God is conveyed as being under the shelter of his protective wings, safe from harm. But the imagery extends further. The psalmist writes that God's truth is our shield and buckler. In the context of ancient warfare, a shield was a defensive tool used to ward off attacks, while a buckler was a smaller, versatile shield that was also used to strike back at adversaries. The combination of these two signifies a robust defense mechanism capable of both warding off and retaliating against threats. Applying this metaphor to our faith journey, God's truth becomes our spiritual armor. It safeguards us against the deceit and lies of this world and shields us from the traps of doubt, fear, and despair. More than just defending us, it empowers us to bravely counter, upholding our beliefs, living with conviction, and displaying courage. This is a profound metaphor, isn't it? But let's not, it's not mere symbolism. This is the lived reality for those who inhabit the secret dwelling of the Most High and live under the shade of the Almighty. To them, God is not only a sanctuary and but also a protective mother bird and a divine shield and buckler. Reflecting back to our initial question, what if you had a shield that could protect you from anything? According to Psalm 91, you indeed have such a shield. You are safeguarded by God's truth you under his divine protection, a divine shield impervious to any harm. Wouldn't you feel invincible? What are you afraid of? As the sun sets and the world descends into quiet, what fears arise? Or in the stark brightness of sunlit days, what dread holds you captive? Psalm 91 provides a comforting message, a message of courage which is not reliant on danger's absence, but God's presence. Consider the night's unknown dangers, the unseen threats, the hidden risks, then envision the perils visible in broad daylight, the battles fought, the challenges faced. However, the psalmist reassures, there's no need for fear. But how is that possible? How can we stand unflinching in fear's face? The answer lies not in our might, but in the assurance of God's protection. The psalmist emphasizes that this assurance is our fortress during fearful times. When we truly comprehend that God is our sanctuary and our strength, we can confront fear and declare, you hold no sway over me. Fear, as it turns out, is more than a mere feeling. It's a reaction a reaction to perceived danger or threat. As we find our sanctuary in the Most High, the perceived danger loses its power. The threat's potency diminishes. Almighty God promises us deliverance, protection, and assurance. This promise is not conditional. It doesn't rely on danger's absence or safety's presence. It relies solely on God's presence. So, with such a shield, doesn't fear become irrelevant? What are you afraid of? Ever wished you could see the outcome of your enemy's actions? 
Let's explore an intriguing concept, divine justice and retribution. This theme has captivated humans for centuries, spanning many cultures and faiths. Psalm 91 offers a profound insight into this universal curiosity. The psalmist discloses a unique privilege granted to those who seek refuge in God, those who consider the Most High their sanctuary. They get to witness the downfall of the wicked. This isn't about deriving pleasure from others' misfortune, but gaining a deeper understanding of divine justice. This idea is foundational to numerous religions, providing solace that a supreme moral order exists in the universe. It's the belief that every individual reaps what they sow, actions bear consequences, and while these consequences may not always be immediate, they are inescapable. In the of evil, justice may seem delayed or even missing, but the psalmist assures us otherwise. The wicked might appear to thrive momentarily, but their day of judgment is inevitable, and those who have put their faith in God will have the chance to witness this reckoning. This isn't a call for personal vendetta or bitterness, but a message to trust in the divine justice system, to believe that God's watchful eye misses nothing. It urges us to persist in righteous living, letting God handle the rest. Encapsulated within this is a powerful message of hope, a beacon amidst life's tempest. No matter how daunting our circumstance is, we can trust in God's justice. We can believe that He sees every transgression, each act of wickedness, and that He will eventually address them in His way and His time. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? It's like having a front row seat to the ultimate justice system. Ever wished for a guardian angel? You know, those celestial beings that are often depicted with wings, floating around in various works of fine art, who are thought of as always having a keen eye on us, guiding us through life's complexities and shielding us from harm. According to the words written in Psalm 91, these guardian angels are seen as more than simply fragment of our imagination. Rather, they are perceived as a divine promise. The scriptures written centuries ago pronounce, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Isn't that an unimaginable concept? To envision a celestial crew ordained by none other than the Almighty himself, to oversee, protect, and guide you in all your ways. Their presence is not limited to the big significant milestones of life, but they are there with us in our small everyday moments as well. These guardian angels, they're not just passive observers. They are active contributors to our experiences. They carry us in their sacred hands, preventing us from faltering, keeping us safe from potential harm, as though we each have a divine security detail, unfaltering, unyielding, and unwavering, that neither sleeps nor takes a break. However, this divine promise is not solely about physical safety. It's also about providing guidance. The angels are entrusted with the task of keeping us in all our ways. They guide us down the path is right for us, assist us in making the right choices, and lead us towards our divine destiny. And perhaps the most incredible part of all is that this divine protection and guidance isn't a privilege afforded to just a select few. It's a promise to all those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High to all those who take the Lord as their sanctuary. So, when you find yourself feeling alone, remember, you're not. You have a faithful team of guardian angels on your side. When you feel lost and unsure of your next step, remember, you're not. You have divine guidance pointing you on the right path. And when you feel overwhelmed with fear, remember, you're not. You have divine protection acting as a shield against harm. Imagine having a personal team of guardian angels at your service. Per the words of Psalm 91, you don't have to simply imagine. It's a divine promise, and it's yours for the taking. Ever dreamt of being fearless in the face of danger? This concept is explored vividly in Psalm 91. This biblical verse offers some audacious promises, one of which ensures that we can tread upon lions and adders. However, before you assume this to be a literal interpretation, let's delve deeper into its symbolism. In various cultures and throughout different epochs, the lion has been revered as a symbol of sovereignty, might, and regality. It is a creature that incites both fear and admiration, a powerful force embodying strength and prowess. On the other end of the spectrum, the serpent or adder represents cunning, deceit, and duplicity. It's a creature that operates covertly, striking when least expected, embodying the element of surprise and guile. The beauty of Psalm 91 lies in the assurance it provides it doesn't merely imply that we'll face these threats, but rather that we will conquer them. We are told that we tread or walk victorious 
over these formidable adversaries. It's a statement that exudes boldness, but it's more than just that. It's a deeply comforting promise that regardless of the challenges we face, no matter how formidable or conniving they may seem, we are assured of triumph. The essence of this psalm isn't about developing a superhero-like invincibility to danger. Instead, it's about the divine power that emboldens us to confront our fears and overcome them. It's about understanding that we are not alone in our battles, that with divine assistance, we can counter even the most daunting threats, whether they emulate the strength of a lion or the cunning of a serpent. This concept of treading on lions and adders extends beyond the physical realm. It serves as a metaphor for surmounting life's challenges and obstacles. The lions and serpents of our lives can take on many forms. They could be personal fears, insecurities, or external adversities that we face. Psalm 91 extends a divine mandate, a heavenly decree, asserting that we can overcome these fears with the aid of a higher power. It's not an invitation to recklessness. Instead, it urges us to be fearless and confront our problems boldly, knowing that we're not alone and that triumph inevitable. It's like being given a divine mandate to trample over your fears. Ever wondered if anyone would be there for you in times of trouble? Amid life's whirlwind of chaos, a feeling of isolation might creep in. However, Psalm 91 offers an irrefutable promise that obliterates this sense of loneliness. This psalm, abundant with divine guarantee, serves as a beacon guiding us through the tumult. It underscores that we are never truly alone. Picture a lifeline stretching beyond our earthly realm, reaching the universe's core. This isn't just poetic language. It's a spiritual truth, a pledge from the Creator Himself. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. These words are more than ink on parchment. They are a heavenly vow, a sacred pledge of his unyielding presence. The feeling of tranquility that arises from knowing the universe's creator isn't an aloof entity is powerful. He's not merely observing our lives from afar. He is a God who interacts, listens, and acts. He's not a passive spectator, but an active participant accompanying us, directing us, and lifting us in our bleakest moments. His promise of presence isn't conditional. It doesn't hinge on our perfection or achievements. It stems from His character, His consistent essence. It's a promise emanating from His profound love for us, a love so deep that He ensured us of His continual assistance in our times of trouble. So, whenever the winds of life become overwhelming and the waves seem unrelenting, recall Psalm 91. Remember that you're not solitary. You possess a lifeline that surpasses the physical, connecting you with the divine. Keep in mind that the universe's creator has pledged his presence and assistance during your challenging times. He is not distant or indifferent, but always present and responsive. Despite the stormy seas that life may throw your way, you are not alone. You have a lifeline that stretches beyond physical limitations and connects you directly to the divine. It is a connection that cannot be severed by hardship or difficulty, but is ever-present and unyielding. So, when the night is darkest and the storm is strongest, remember this promise of eternal presence and divine help. It's like having a lifeline directly to the Creator 24-7. What would you do if you knew you could live a long, meaningful life? This question lies at the heart of Psalm 91, verse 16. The psalmist conjures the vivid imagery of a lifetime characterized by divine love and protection. He portrays a life extending beyond typical years, a life not dictated by time, but determined by experience, wisdom, and knowledge. The promise of long life, according to the psalmist, is not merely about adding more days to one's existence, but about enriching our souls for an eternal journey. It's about shaping a life so rich, so fulfilling, that it transcends the physical boundaries and stretches into the spiritual realm. The psalmist's faith in this divine assurance is resolute. He is certain that God's word is as unwavering as mountains, as constant as the dawn. He trusts that God's promises are never broken, never disregarded, never left unfulfilled. Hence, he anticipates a long life, not with apprehension, but with joy and hope. His expectation is not merely for an extended life, but an eternal one. An eternity spent in the divine presence of God, immersed in His love, enlightened by His wisdom, and finding solace in His peace. A life that is infinite, a life that continues flourish in God's radiance. The blessing of long life is not just about increased years, 
It's the promise of a life that's so rich, so full, so meaningful, that its essence trickles into eternity. The number of breaths we take isn't what measures life, but the moments that leave us breathless. Therefore, as we contemplate the psalmist's question, let's ponder not just our lifespan, but the quality of our lives. Let's aim to lead a life that's so intense, so impactful, that its mark will be etched into eternity. Eternal life is more than just endless time. It's the promise of a life so full of love, wisdom, and peace that it overflows into the heavenly realm. It's the assurance of a life marked by moments that take our breath away and leave us in awe. With the psalmist's question in mind, let us strive to live a life of quality, not just quantity. A life so full, so profound that its echo reaches the farthest corners of eternity. After, after all, it's like being given a ticket to eternity. How would you feel if someone took care of all your needs? Let's explore the comforting pastures of Psalm 23. Here we see God as the Good Shepherd, a beautiful portrayal that captures our hearts. It's a stirring image, a shepherd tending his flock, ensuring they're safe, nourished, and at peace. This representation of God shows his endless care, his generous provision, and his boundless love for us. It's more than just fulfilling our physical needs. It's about spiritual, emotional, and mental nourishment from the Good Shepherd's care. Being a shepherd is no easy task. It demands constant vigilance, boundless, and a selfless nature. The shepherd knows each sheep, comprehends their nature, their needs, and their fears. He guides them to green pastures, leads them beside peaceful waters, and shields from harm. Now picture that shepherd as God. He knows you, understands your strengths, strengths, and weaknesses, comprehends your happiness and sadness. He guides you through life's journey and is there to guard you when danger looms. He's not just a provider. He goes beyond, assuring you have everything you need to thrive, not just survive. Imagine a shepherd who's not just good, but perfect. One who knows you more than you know yourself, loves more than you can fathom, and is devoted to your well-being in every conceivable way. It's a soothing thought, isn't it? To know you're not alone, to know you're to know you're valued. Imagine having a shepherd who knows exactly what you need and not only imagines it, but actualizes it. That's the promise of God, the good shepherd. With him, we shall not want for he is our guide, our defender and our provider. Ever longed for a peaceful place of rest? Imagine this, a landscape of verdant meadows glowing under the sun calm waters reflecting the clear sky. These are not mere scenic views. They embody spiritual rest and tranquility that comes with faith in God. Visualize yourself in these meadows, the grass caressing your feet, the heavens above, a feeling of peace akin to a physical sensation. Here, life moves at a leisurely pace. There's no rush, no stress, just the rhythmic pulse of existence, of being present in the now. This is the place of God provides, a sanctuary where we can shed our worries, a haven for soul renewal. Now envision these placid waters, our calm, undisturbed, reflecting everything with surreal clarity. These waters symbolize serene peace, a peace that transcends understanding, born of faith and trust in God. They signify a spiritual tranquility, consistent and unchanged, even amidst turbulent times. These meadows and tranquil waters are not mere geographical locations. They are states of existence, moods of the soul. They exemplify a spiritual peace and rest, accessible to anyone choosing to trust in God, choosing to exist in His aura. They are a covenant, a testament to the peaceful existence attainable when surrendering our fears and worries to Him. In our often chaotic world, where uncertainty breeds fear, these meadows and tranquil waters a sanctuary. They serve as a reminder of the available peaceful havens. All that's required is trust in Him, on Him, and He will guide us to these havens of rest and tranquility. It's like finding the perfect oasis in the middle of a desert. Ever wondered what path to take in life? It's a question we all grapple with at different stages of our journey. But maybe, just maybe, the answer is not as complex as it seems. The 23rd Psalm offers a profound perspective. There, we find the Lord, depicted as a shepherd, our guide, steering us towards peace and prosperity, towards green pastures and tranquil waters. But there's more. He also leads us down the paths of righteousness. Now, what does this signify, this paths of righteousness? It extends beyond mere moral navigation or conforming to societal expectations. It's about aligning ourselves with a grander design, a divine blueprint for our lives. It's entrusting our walk to God, permitting Him to guide our decisions, infuse our thoughts with wisdom, 
This divine guidance isn't an imposition, rather it's a heartfelt invitation. An invitation to surrender our limited comprehension and to lean on God's boundless wisdom. It's acknowledging that our individual perspectives may not always comprehend the larger picture, God's grand design intricately woven into our. When we embrace God's guidance down the paths of righteousness, we're not merely walking. We're embarking on a journey with purpose, conviction, a sense of divine destiny. We transform from aimless wanderers to purposeful travelers, dancing to the divine rhythm of life. Here's the best part. This path of righteousness doesn't confine us. On the contrary, it liberates us. It's a journey of freedom, of peace, of fulfillment. It's a route that guides us towards our true selves, our untapped potential, our loftiest goals. So when you find yourself at life's crossroads, unsure of the direction to take, recall that shepherd from the psalm, the one who guides us down the paths of righteousness. Entrust your journey to him, rely on his wisdom, and follow his lead. It's like having a GPS that never fails. Ever faced a situation that felt like walking through a dark valley? Picture yourself in a desolate valley, the colossal walls of the valley casting everything into deep shadows. It's a chilling sight, right? Psalm 23 paints just such a picture as it describes the journey through the valley of the shadow of death. You might think of it as a place of despair or terror, but let's explore its true significance. The valley is not some geographical location. It's a potent metaphor for our life's struggles. It represents those periods of darkness when hope dwindles, obstacles seem insuperable, and our spirits are utterly drained. But remember, in this valley, we are never alone. The psalmist confidently professes, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This means, even in our bleakest moments, God is with us. His presence is not just comforting, but is a beacon guiding us through the darkness. His rod and staff, symbols of direction and provide a reassurance that we are not forsaken. Our journey through the valley isn't a one, nor is it endless. It's a passage, a transition, a pathway through adversity that ultimately leads to tranquility and renewal. It's indeed a test of faith and courage, a test of our reliance on God's unwavering love and protection. So, when you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, don't see it as a place of fear. Instead, see it as a place of transformation, a place where faith is purified, character is sculpted, strength is honed. It's a place where we learn to depend on God's ceaseless love and mercy. Ever considered what it would be like to have an everlasting light even in the darkest valley? Because with God by our side, we can walk through any valley, no matter how dark, and emerge stronger, braver, and more resilient than before. Ever been to a feast in the presence of your enemies? This thought alone might stir your imagination. Picture a grand banquet, a table brimming with an array of delicious dishes, an assortment of colorful fruits, and wine goblets filled with the finest of blends. The setting is not some undisturbed corner. It's a battlefield filled with tension and turmoil. Amidst this chaotic landscape, a table has been prepared for you. This striking imagery is borrowed from Psalm 23, depicting God's generous provision despite adversity. This picture is not about gloating over defeated foes. Instead, it signifies God's reassurance to us amidst the brewing storm, his promise to nurture and fortify us, irrespective of the circumstances. Imagine the contrast. It's easy to be provided for during peace, but experiencing a feast amidst a battlefield, that's an entirely different scenario. Such an act is a profound testament to God's unwavering dedication to us, his pledge to support us, regardless of the enemies surrounding us. His provision isn't meager, but plentiful. His blessings aren't just adequate, they are super abundant. This table is not just about material sustenance. It's a representation of his tranquility, his delight, his, his wisdom, the spiritual nourishment we require to flourish, even in the face of adversity. This table symbolizes the certainty of God's protection and provision, his promise to sustain us, to us, to strengthen us, no matter what. It's about his enduring love, his faithfulness, his commitment to us, it's about the peace he offers, the joy he brings, the strength he provides, all the spiritual nourishment we need to thrive in the most daunting circumstances. So remember this, regardless of the challenges, no matter the intensity of opposition, God has arranged a banquet for you. A festive spread of blessings, an abundant feast of favor is laid out before you. Even as your enemies surround you, they are merely spectators, witnessing as you partake of God's goodness, as you celebrate in his abundance.
It's like being honored at a banquet while your enemies can only watch. Ever had your cup run over with blessings? Ponder that. Have you ever seen such a wealth of positivity, blessings, and good things that you felt your cup wasn't just full, but overflowing? This overflowing cup metaphor is potent. It depicts bounty and excess, a cup so full it cannot hold all of the goodness. This imagery symbolizes God's abundant blessings, His limitless generosity that exceeds our needs and even our expectations. He doesn't just fill our cup when He blesses us, He causes it to overflow. An overflowing cup signifies wealth and prosperity. But it's not just about material wealth. Spiritual wealth also comes into play. It embodies love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit, the blessings that result from a life intertwined with God. When our cup overflows, it doesn't just benefit us. The overflowing cup spills over, and those blessings can extend to the people around us. We become a blessing hub for others, disseminating the love and goodness that God has filled our lives with. There are moments when our cup may seem empty, when we're parched for blessings, and it feels as though we're scraping the bottom. But remember, even in those moments, God is there. He's ready to fill your cup, to make it overflow. He's prepared to give you more than you can ever ask or imagine. God's generosity is not by our expectations. His blessings aren't like the ones the world gives. His gifts are not scarce or limited. They're abundant, they're overflowing and they're accessible to all who ask, seek, and knock. So, when you're feeling low, remember the overflowing cup. Recall God's abundant blessings. Ask Him to refill your cup to make it overflow, and then observe as He surpasses your expectations, filling your life with blessings more abundant than you could ever fathom. It's like having your cup filled to the brim and overflowing. Ever wondered where you'll spend eternity? Let's explore the last verse of Psalm 23. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, says the psalmist, expressing certainty about his eternal home. This isn't just a wish or a possible outcome. It is a firm assurance. The house of the Lord, in biblical interpretation, refers to the temple where God dwelled. Today, it symbolizes being in God's presence, living in tight-knit relationship with Him. It signifies life beyond our earthly existence, life that is eternal and marked by peace, joy, and God's divine presence. This eternal life isn't only about its unending nature, but about its quality, its life at its prime, life as God meant it to be. Jesus, in the New Testament, promised eternal life to believers. He assured, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. This is our hope as believers, the guarantee of dwelling in God's presence forever. This isn't just about the future, but also pertains to our earthly lives. As we trust in God and make him our fortress, we can experience a facet of this dwelling in the house of the Lord. We can feel his peace, comfort, guidance, and love today. As we, the powerful verse from Psalm 23, let's draw encouragement from the psalmist's assurance. Let's look ahead with hope to our eternal dwelling in the house of the Lord. It's like having a permanent residence in the most glorious place imaginable. Please like and subscribe.